and say 30. And I'm hoping that we can get through this lecture so that you can have Wednesday and Friday to work on the lab. Okay. So today we're going to be covering sensors and actuators and how to use them with the Arduino boards. So functional sensors, we have different types of sensors. So there are these binary sensors as well as analog sensors. So one of the sensors that you guys have, that is an example of a binary sensor, is this touch sensor. So if you touch it, it's text that you touched it. So you're either touching it or not touching it. Okay. So that's what makes it a binary sensor. It only has these two different states. And then we also have analog sensors. And one of these analog sensors that you have in your kits is this water level detector. So the way that this sensor works is based on where the water level is, like if it's submerged this much, the resistance of the sensor changes, and that is fed back into the Arduino. So based on the water level, I have a different resistance. So then you have to just decipher what is the water level based on the resistance. So that is one binary sensor and one analog sensor. So what's some other examples that you can think of? Uh, binary or analog sensors. We've talked about a few. Okay, so what would a button be? What's a switch? And then what's a temperature sensor? Right. Okay. So what else? A sensor that's that shows how much light there is at the time log. Yeah. Since sensors are also analog. Yes. So, yeah, I guess if it's luminance detection, but like a, a lot of distance sensors, like ultrasonic sensors, they're analog, but it's not based on a resistance. It's based on time, how much time it takes for it to bounce off the thing in front of it and to come back. All right, so I think we have a good understanding of these different sensors. Is it binary or is it analog, right? And there are different types of sensors. I'm just showing you like a couple of examples. All right, so the next part is how are we going to connect these sensors? To the Arduino board. So the very first thing you need to do, whether it's a sensor or an actuator, is look at the pins. What are the different connections that are required? So from this sensor, we have VCC, ground, and signal. So VCC is the power on the positive side, and then ground is power on the negative side. And one thing that we have to ensure is that we're supplying the correct amount of power. So for the touch sensor that we have, if you look it up, the data sheet says that it will set anywhere between 3.3 and 5 volts. So anywhere under 3.3 volts, it might not turn on properly. Anywhere over 5 volts, you might kill the sensor. So on our Arduino, we have 3.3 volts output as well as 5 volts. So you can basically just pick whichever one for this sensor. And then on this picture, the data line is called signal. On 
our touch sensor in our kit is called IO. But you can kind of see how those two are kind of the same thing, right? What, the signal or the input output, right? So in this case, it's the output of the sensor to the digital inputs on the Arduino. So then looking at the other sensor that we were looking at, the water level, it again has positive, negative. So positive is for the positive power side. Negative, you just connect the graph. And then we also have to ensure that we connect the right voltage. And if we look at the sensor, we Google it, we'll see that the data sheet again says it will accept 3.3 volts to 5 volts. So we can again just pick whichever one. Have those two available options on our board. So we can power it like that. And you can also power externally if you want to. And then it also has this other pin S. And that is the output of the sensor. So we have to connect these things to the Arduino with our trap wires, or we can connect it through the breadboard. And that's how we would connect them. And then we just need to write code for these things, right? So here's the code for setting up these two sensors. We connected the touch sensor to pin 10 which is a digital input pin. And then we're connecting the water sensor to analog zero, so A zero. And then our code has these two global variables. What's the current state of the touch sensor? What is the last state of the touch sensor? And then for our setup, which again is run once, right? This is how we tell the Arduino what are the pins and what are their types. So touch pin, so pin 10 is input. And one thing that you might encounter is that some sensors will require a resistor, kind of like how the LED required that resistor. You would again find that out from the data sheet. It will tell you if it needs to be pull up or pull down. So pull up, all that means is that the resistor is connected between the sensor and the positive power side. Or pull down means that the resistor goes between the sensor and the ground. And you would, rather than putting inputs, you would have input underscore pull up, input underscore pull down. And then for our analog sensor, we actually don't need to specify that it is this input. It's still good practice to do it. The reason that it's not necessary is because the analog read function does that for us, as well as it's one of the analog inputs. It's labeled as A0 because it's an analog input. And then just so that we can see the outputs, we're going to begin with serial. So this allows us to print. And then the loop that runs continuously, we're going to get the current states of the touch sensor. And if the last state was low and the current state is high, that means that you touch the sensor, right? If the last state is high and the current state is low, that means you let go of the sensor. You stop touching it. And then we update last state to be current state. And when we come back around, current state is we read the sensor. And then for the water level sensor, we do analog read. Of digital read, 
because it's not binary. It's the analog sensor. And this will give us some integer value. And when I was testing the sensor, basically the integer value increases the more you dip it into the water. So you would have to figure out based on where you want to trigger the water level is too high, or if you want to trigger that the water level is too low, you just have to know what is the value of the sensor at that water level trigger that you want. And you can do that just by testing. Just dip it into the water, see what it is at that water level that you want it to trigger. At. And the code here just prints out the water level as the raw outputs from the sensor, or in our case, the inputs into the Arduino from the output of the sensor. So this is connecting the sensors to the Arduino board. Very similar to what we already did with the LEDs, right? Except now we're reading instead of writing. And we also have to figure out how we need to connect them to the board. So for actuators, we're going to cover three different types of actuators. So we have binary, and binary you've worked with before. It's just the LED. It's either on or off, right? And then we have PWM. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulus. And I'll explain what that is uh, in a bit. But one of the actuators that you have that can use PWM is this RGB LED. And the PWM just allows us to have different brightnesses for the LED. And then we have an uh, analog actuator in your kids. There's a servo hard motor. So you just tell it what is the position angle that is, you should move towards, and that's where it will go. So it has this continuous curve, right, of where it can go. So that's what makes it analog. So I'm going to go, again, refer back to you guys. What are some different binary, PWM, or analog actuators? Maybe you don't know PWM. That's binary and analog actuators you should know. Servo motors or what? Oh. I've never seen a servo motor use PWM. It could exist. I've never seen them. Uh, what's a binary actuator? Besides the LED. Okay, so I'll give you another example. There's a thing called a relay, which is just a switch. So it's just going to connect two things together. So for the relay, you either are telling it to connect or disconnect. So that's binary, right? So if you have any like smart light switches in your house, like these ones, they use relays. And then analog. You have like cruise control in the car, you have to give it how much acceleration you want to provide, how much deceleration you want to provide. Those would be analog things, right? 
So again, how to connect them? We have to identify the different parts. What are the different pins? So for our LED, we have the input to the LED, which is the positive power side. And then ground is just ground, right? And this is going to control the LED by turning it on or off when you're providing power or not. And in this case, you to protect the LED, you connect a pull-up resistor from our previous example, from the previous slide. Right? You have the 220 ohm resistor. Right. So this is our PWM example, and we're going to again identify these different inputs. So we have ground, which is this negative pin again. Oh, yeah. And then we have inputs, and we have three different inputs, R, G, and B. One for the red LED, one for the green LED, one for the blue LED. And just like the single LED, these are just going to turn on if you're providing power or not. And we, again, need the pull-up resistors to protect the LED. So you can use these things without the pull-up resistor or pull-down resistor, but they're there to protect. You might fry the LED if you just if you don't have them. So the other thing was this PWM signal. So the PWM signal is my next slide. Right? It just turns on the LED and turns off the LED very fast. And based on the percentage of time that it's on, that gives you this perceived brightness. So the higher the duty cycle or the percentage that it's on, the brighter. So if it's never on, the brightness is zero, right? If it's on 25% of the time, that's like 25% brightness. Sweet. And then 50% of the time, 50% brightness. 70%, 74% brightness. And then if you just have the entire time it's on, that's its max brightness. So for the LED from lab zero, it's only max brightness or off. But for these, they're anywhere between zero and 100%, and it's at a resolution of eight bits. So it can be 0 through 255. And because of this, we can make all these different colors. Right? So if we make blue very bright and red very bright, we get this purple color. Okay? And if we made blue a little less dim, and red very bright, you'd get more of a lighter purple color, right? So you can create all these different combinations of colors with the three LEDs. So is this PWM clear to you guys how it works? Okay. So here is our code for the PWM LEDs. I'm not showing the code for the binary one because you guys have that. It was lab zero, right? So we our red pin is pin seven, green is six, blue is five. And our setup is just their outputs, right? So just like before with the single one. But now we have this helper function, I pasted it twice. So you can just ignore this one. It's the same as this over here. So our helper function is we're going to get these three integer values, and we're going to write them to the pins corresponding to the color. And these integer values are anywhere between 0 and 255. 
and then in the loop, we're going to call set color with our three values. Then it's R, G, and then B, right? So red, green, and then blue. So this one is setting red to max brightness, and then green and blue are. So the color we would expect is just pure red, right? Then we ex delay one. 1000, so it stays red for one second. Then we set it to green, set it to green for one second. And then blue for one second. And if you have all of them equal, you get white, and you can get very brightnesses of white for one second. And then here is a purple color. And then we have a lighter purple color. So the PWM ones are fairly simple as well. Do you have any question on this? Is it exact multiple inputs of RGB just the first? No, the PWM, there's one for each one of them. So it could just be one, like if you just had a white LED, it would only have one input. But that could also be PWM. But not every single LED is able to handle PW. All right, so the last thing we have is this analog actuator, and it's the servo motor. So we, again, identify the different pins. The servo has three pins. So it has input power, which is positive. And then it has ground, which is the negative side of power. And for the single servo, you can power this straight from the board. But if you have multiple different servos and they all want to work at the same time, your board is not going to provide enough power. They might not work. So in that case, you would need to power them externally. And you can power them externally with the same battery that you're powering your board with. Because for now, we're, our boards are connected to the computer, sorry, and that's how they're getting power. But if you were to deploy them, they wouldn't be connected to the computer, right? They would be connected to some battery. You just might need to have other circuits to provide the right voltages, right? The board is accept, expecting five volts. This servo, it can go up to nine volts. But it will accept five volts if there is just one of them. And then we have the signal wire. So the signal wire is just what we're using to communicate what is this angle that the servo should be at. And that would go into the output pin on the Arduino. So here's the code. For the servos, and this is the case for quite a few of these actuators and sensors, you might have a library that you can just import. So do just, if you're looking at a sensor or actuator, Google it, and you'll find out if you can use a library or not. Now we're connecting it to pin 9, and we have because of the library, we can just create this servo object. And we have this global variable of the position. And again, from the library, our setup is to attach our servo object to the pin that we're connecting it to, right? which is pin 9. And then here is our main loop. All we're doing is going from zero to 180 and then we go from 180 to zero so it just goes back and forth okay. and we use the again the package right it's just my servo dot write what is the angle that you want so are we good with this so that's all for getting you guys prepared for that.
I'll just briefly show you the lab. And since we finish, we'll have all of Wednesday, all of Friday. This lab will take longer. So I do want to, I did want to give you that time to work on it. So let's see. Labs. That one. And then let's just look at the PDF. Just so we can make sure. People watching the recording can see. All right. So you can read this, or I'm just going to describe it. All right. We went over two different types of sensors, binary and analog sensors. And we went over three different types of actuators, binary, PWM, and analog. Your job is to first look at your kit. Look at all the sensors, pick a new binary sensor, and then connect it to Arduino, write a program where you can detect that sensor's input, and then do the same thing for an analog sensor. Pick a new analog sensor. So what I mean by this is for us, I've covered the touch sensor and the water level sensor. So you can't pick either of those. Okay. And then for the actuators, you're going to do the same thing. Pick a new binary actuator, find a new PWM actuator, find a new analog actuator, and connect them to the Arduino board, demonstrate that you were able to use them properly. And again, you can't use the LED as the binary one because you already did it, right? And for the PWM, I'm not sure if there's another PWM uh, enabled actuator besides the RGB LED. If that's the case, you can use the RGB LED. So that's the first part of the lab, right? Just Work with one of each type of the sensors and actuators. And then the second part of the lab is I want you to pick at least one sensor and at least one actuator and write a program that has them interact with each other. So the example I give, what is the example? Great. So we can dim or brighten the RGB LED based on the water level. Or we can change the color based on the water level. So something simple like that. Just get input from the sensor and change the output based on the input. Just as long as it's not random. It has to be connected, right? So that is your lab one. And you'll have all of Wednesday, all of Friday. And the other homework is just due on Friday. So if you haven't finished the other homework, you can use the rest of this time to work on it. But otherwise, I'll be here to answer questions. I don't think there is enough time to really get anything out and start on this. But if you wanted to, gets the board and check it out, you could do that. So you can take it home. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the poll everywhere code is 242. 